let's take a look at creating tempo maps and scoring for film using the time warp tool. Often tracks that are recorded aren't recorded to a click track, meaning that they don't have a steady bar beat, they don't have a steady tempo, and they have no correlation to the bar and beat. While this can lead to very exciting musical performances, it can also make it difficult for doing editing in programs like Cubase. Now let's take a listen to our example here of our click track with an existing track. Now let's say I wanted to do a remix and add different elements, but I can't match up the tempo because the original tempo is actually changing subtly. So what we could do is simply come here into our transport bar and we'll activate our tempo track and we'll select our time warp tool which can be found in the MIDI editors or directly on our project window as well. So let's go ahead and what I want to do now is find the downbeats of our piece. So I could say right there is the downbeat of measure two and I'm just going to drag, I move the time warp tool right below measure two and drag right to where measure two should start. Alright, now we'll listen for measure three. So I move measure three where that should start and as I do this you'll see that in my actual tempo track, you'll see subtle changes. In so let's move measure four. Measure five. And we could do this uh, for every beginning of bar or for every beat. I'm gonna use it. Measure six. Intention. Measure seven. Measure eight. And as you can see, make you, make you. we'll have all of our little tempo changes lined up here. So we look at our tempo map, we actually range from you know 94 beats a minute up to 98. So let's take a quick listen. And now we'll just turn on our click track. Now let's say I wanted to add a loop on top of that. So I could go to my media bay and let's audition a couple of different drum loops. So we'll come here. So let's say I want that drum loop. I'm gonna just copy it to measure two. And what I wanna do now is to have that drum loop actually when I play it and follow the tempo changes. So I'm gonna to go to my pool window and we're gonna activate musical mode on that drum loop. So now when I play it, we'll just have it come right here and let's go ahead and just duplicate that loop and we'll give you an idea. So we'll go ahead and play just that loop and now that loop will speed up. So now our drum loop is following those same tempo changes. Now this can also work for doing time-based effects. So if I wanted to use delays or modulation effects, let's say I want to throw a phaser on my drums, I can now come over here and we'll go to our modulation and we'll select phaser. And as we turn on our phaser, most of the plugins you'll see that are tempo based can, will also have a sync button. So now I could come right over here and let's go ahead and turn on our phaser. Now our phaser, the modulation rate will actually be on whole notes. So every measure, this will speed up. So now that will have the bar beat correlation. So now all of your edits will line up on beat, your uh, delays, your flanging, chorusing effects will be musically timed as well. Plus you have the ability of working with adding different elements like loops, different audio loops, MIDI loops, and while in musical mode, having them automatically follow the existing tempo change. Now there's also a lot of interesting work that we could do when working with video with our time warp tool. So let's come over here and let's just open up our video window and we'll just come here and let's first we'll activate our time warp tool again 
and let's go ahead and play our video so as we play let's say we'll now we'll turn on our video window so we see our thumbnail view there so let's say I want to find a particular scene let's say okay I want to start right there and we'll kind of zoom in just a little bit and often when there's video edit and we could actually just kind of fine-tune our in and out points when there's video edits it's hard to sometimes make an even number of measures based on the visual cues it's not the highest priority of the video editor so what we could do now is we'll just come here and we'll move this so right where this bullets kind of goes flat I want that to be the start of a measure so I want to now just grab my time warp tool and I want measure 106 to be at that point and now we're gonna find our out point say at the end of the scene here give it a couple of seconds so we see some all right and we'll kind of go down to dark right there so I want that to be measure 112 so if I actually played something uh, it wouldn't be an even number of measures so I'm gonna just select measure 112 and put it right there now that automatically puts the tempo change now if I have uh, performance loaded up into a plugin like Holly and Sonic that's rhythmically based something like that what I could do now is just go into my key editor and then if I wanted to just go right to measure 106 I could actually just draw a note in so we'll start at measure 106 and we'll have this kind of last 112 so I'll just go we'll say we want all right so now as we play our visual cue we'll open up our video window and as we kind of start go out of one scene and right at our start point And our out point. So now using the time warp tool, whether you're doing creating tempo maps of existing musical performances, you want to do remixes, work with your effects, uh, simplify your editing, as well as create tempo maps for your visual cues for film scoring, the time warp tool is very easy and powerful.